of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. I am going through it at the moment. My allergies are acting crazy. My injuries from the car accident are bothering me like crazy. I am in so much pain, but I wanted to stay committed to you guys and do this video since we've been enjoying our recaps on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. So this is my five highlights in five minutes, hopefully. My first highlight of the night is when Scrap was given his sentence by the judge. Like, I literally cried like I was the main chick. Like, it hurt my heart to hear the judge say that he was gonna get 20 years, which is mandatory five years, and the remainder would be probation. So that's 15 years of probation. My God, and he had to pay $100,000, and I think his probation is contingent upon him paying the $100,000. So, I'm telling you, tears rolled down my face, my guy, like I was the main chick. And I might be the side chick, because you know, Scrap gets coochie thrown at him non-stop. And while I'm talking about Scrap getting coochie non-stop, I had to give Tommy the side eye when she said that Scrap was going to come running back to her once he realized what he lost. And I'm like, girl, um, aren't you having problems now because Coochie's getting thrown at Scrap left and right? So that was something cute for Tommy to say to make her own self feel good. My second highlight of the night is I wish that I could get $100 for every damn time Mimi said promise be made. She said it 100 times in this episode, I'd be paid. I'm much like, okay, is this promise be made chick? Like, is she a sponsor for Love and Hip Hop Atlanta on this particular episode? Because she was getting her life, her brand was getting blasted all across this episode. I'm like, would you stop saying her damn name? We get it. Her name is Promise B. May. Mimi, we get it. Okay. My third highlight of the night is when Stevie J and Mimi arrived to Promise B. May's house. And baby, she was sweating like a pig in heat while Mimi and Stevie J were completely dry and fresh faced, my God, okay? I was like, girl, what are you going through? I don't think it's the weight, it's those lies. See, you're sweating because you're lying. That's how you know somebody is lying. Sweat just pouring down your face while everybody else is just completely dry and fresh faced, my God. My fourth highlight of the night, oh my God, my heart dropped to the floor. I could not believe that Jocelyn, the Puerto Rican princess Hernandez, lied to Mimi about the two babies. And then she was kicking and laughing about it to John. I'm like, okay, Jocelyn, you was getting some kudos for being the, the better chick this season. You was, you know, changing your ways. I was like, okay, Jocelyn is realizing that she has a brand. So now it's time to, you know, clean it up a little bit. She made up with Mimi. But I knew something sneaky and something iffy and something odd was coming up because I was surprised that Jocelyn was calling Mimi Molly the Maid again. I'm like, but that's your girlfriend now. Why are you calling her Molly the Maid? My fifth highlight of the night is about that darn freaking B. Smith. You guys know that I cannot stand her one bit. I was completely shocked and appalled that she finally had the opportunity to check someone directly who said negative stuff about transgenders. And then you kind of like, you, you chickened out. And it was interesting because you give this masculine aggressiveness when you're checking the girls like Miss Deb and Tammy and Bambi. And then you gave that masculine baritone voice. I can't even go that deep, and I'm, and I'm giving you man. I can't even go that deep, but you gave that voice to Mimi and Arian at their luncheon. But when it's time to check the right person, you ain't give him nothing. Why you didn't give that baritone voice to Scrappy? Why didn't you check him with that voice, D. Smith? That just goes to show that you really aren't about it. You're only approaching people who you think you can get the one up on and who you think that you can intimidate. But you know what? Like I said, you didn't give that masculine voice, that deep baritone voice to Scrappy. Why didn't you do that, huh? 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 Why you didn't do that? Now, I actually have a bonus highlight of the night. 
and is the fact that Stevie J has finally told the truth and informed us that he was never married to Jocelyn, the Puerto Rican princess Hernandez, which is really, it really isn't any news because we all knew that marriage was a sham. I mean, because they are all about TV and showing and being showy. And you can't tell me they wouldn't have been bragging with the marriage papers and have had a, a lavish wedding just to show it off. So, there's not much more to say, but I thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, thumbs up this video, follow me on social media, all social media sites at Mr. Ty Couture. Thank you. Of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. I am going through it at the moment. My allergies are acting crazy. My injuries from the car accident are bothering me like crazy. I am in so much pain, but I wanted to stay committed to you guys and do this video since we've been enjoying our recaps on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. So this is my five highlights in five minutes, hopefully. My first highlight of the night is when Scrap was given his sentence by the judge. Like, I literally cried like I was the main chick. Like, it hurt my heart to hear the judge say that he was going to get 20 years, which is mandatory five years, and the remainder would be probation. So that's 15 years of probation. My God, and he had to pay $100,000, and I think his probation is contingent upon him paying the $100,000. So... I'm telling you, tears rolled down my face, my guy, like I was the main chick. And I might be the side chick because you know, Scrap gets coochie thrown at him nonstop. And while I'm talking about Scrap getting coochie nonstop, I had to give Tommy the side eye when she said that Scrap was going to come running back to her once he realized what he lost. And I'm like, girl, um, aren't you having problems now because Coochie is getting thrown at Scrap left and right? So, that was something cute for Tommy to say to make her own self feel good. My second highlight of the night is I wish that I could get $100 for every damn time Mimi said promise be made. She said it 100 times in this episode, I'd be paid. I'm wondering, like, okay, is this promise be made chick like... Is she a sponsor for Love and Hip Hop Atlanta on this particular episode? Because she was getting her life, her brand was getting blasted all across this episode. So I'm like, would she stop saying her damn name? We get it. Her name is Promise Be 